to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. You're hearing about inflation prices. You're hearing about infrastructure bills, blah, blah, blah. What does it actually mean? Well, currently it means that the gas prices is mad high and so is the turkey meat prices. But that's supply chain issues. They're going to make it. They're going to tie it all back to the president, as they always do. But you should know that the president doesn't control gas prices and doesn't control supply chain issues. But nonetheless, if you're the president, everything's your fault, as it should be, Sleepy Joe. But signed into law yesterday was the infrastructure bill. And it's got some good meaning for us here. In the New York City tri-state area, the commuter area, right? There's going to be some jobs, obviously. Roads and things getting fixed. We discussed earlier on the show. I wouldn't anticipate them fixing roads in areas that they always ignore. You know, low income. We're going to have to fight tooth and nail for those roads to get fixed. But they damn sure will repave Battery Park for the ninth time this year. Right. Right. That's right. They damn sure will make sure the elevator's working and the escalators are working in the rich areas. They're going to make sure that happens. But when it comes to low-income areas, it's right. fighting tooth and nail for them to sprinkle a couple of dollars on it. Mm. But that's that's the same no old love. tune. All the time. But here's Kathy Hochul, the current governor of New York, with how this infrastructure bill will help the MTA. We've done the numbers. And as a result of the money we'll be receiving from the president signing of the bill today, and I'll be witnessing this, We anticipate that there'll be no fare hikes for the MTA. So therefore, those of you who are commuters on the MTA and have been anxious about how much this is going to go up, especially in this era of inflation, when it just seems when you're just trying to get your head above water and come out from under a a long, dark period of the pandemic, and you might get a little bit more money in your paycheck, that the cost of living from gasoline to the cost of turkeys in another week and a half, this is really affecting people's ability to just put food on their table. And I'm really excited to say that we will not have to raise the fares or have any service cuts. The service cuts that were planned for 2023, 24 are now off the table for MTA commuters. So this is important. Okay. Nice. Notice she used the word anticipate. We don't anticipate. <laughs> right. Key words. Y'all listen. Now. Here's where the jokes could happen. Not necessarily with that, but I'm told with other pieces of the infrastructure bill. Okay. okay. Everybody pay attention here. This is what I'm told. This is how the jokes usually happens. The money's made available. It's signed into law. So you know that the federal government doesn't actually do any of this building, nor does the state or the local government. They don't actually do it themselves. You guys have heard the term government contracts before. I sure have. Those are companies that now get contracts with the government to do this work. So if the work is not done efficiently, if money is blown, if uh, uh, the local politician in your area hires his buddy's contracting company and overpays them, so then the, then the buddy's contracting company gives kickbacks to his buddy that got him the contract in the first place. That's how money gets blown. Y'all following this? Yeah. It's also how shoddy work gets done. Because remember, the government's not actually doing the work. They're paying for it to be done. They're using our tax dollars, contracting with companies, to get the work done. Now, in some states, they have, you know, the Department of Transportation does some stuff, but there's still local companies that can get this work. So if y'all want to really pay attention to this, because everybody so, you know, wants to point fingers now and pay attention to the jokes. Oh, and my favorite, they want to do their own research. Here's an opportunity for us all to watch how this happens. Because this is also why people have a lack of, especially people with money, they know that this money gets blown because of kickbacks and shenanigans. So just watch for it. And also, if you live in an area where they don't fix the potholes, 
And they're not improving the school buildings because a part of this infrastructure bill is that. Or they're not expanding. You haven't, you know, over the next five years, they're supposed to put broadband in areas that don't have it. Make Wi-Fi more readily available. Public school transportation, like school buses, is supposed to be electric school buses. You got to be paying attention to how this money rolls out so you can see how, who and how the bad stuff happens when the money is supposed to trickle down to your local area. Because we're talking $1.2 trillion. The biggest spend on infrastructure in this country in decades. So this is this is that moment. Because if you're not doing your own research, what's going to end up happening, because most people don't, is when it's time for you to vote, they're gonna people are gonna be pointing fingers. Well, this money didn't. This person didn't do this with the money, and this didn't happen with this money, and this, et cetera, et cetera. We've seen it all before, and it's gonna happen again. They start doing the song and dance, and they're also gonna start pointing to the things that didn't make it into the bill because the Republicans blocked it, and they're gonna use what they blocked to now point back at the Democrats and go, "Well, they couldn't get it done." Well, because you wouldn't sign off on it, bro. You see what I'm saying? Of course. People, this is politics. People exactly. think that the president All just day. waves a wand and makes things happen. It doesn't work they that do. way. They it do. It doesn't work that way. Bar styles. They do. Okay? So pay attention. It is now a law, and over the next five years, they're spending $1.2 trillion. But in the next two years, we're voting at midterms. And in the next four years, we're putting in a new president. So these things could get... I mean, it's signed into law, but things can definitely get slowed down by bureaucracy and money can get blown. And trust me, it will. And trust me, some somebody's buddy is the contracting company that's going to get the government contract that they're going to overcharge on the invoice. So they get a little bit of extra something, something in the invoice, and then they kick back to their buddy on the other side. And donate to their campaign with the kickback money. Or donate to the, I don't know. Their pockets the union too. Or, or their own pocket. No, but they got to they gotta disguise it somehow, Laura. They got to disguise the money trail. They, they got to do that. They got to fill out the invoices right and disguise the money trail. Otherwise, they're going to get audited. Somebody, and a couple people going to go to jail. And that always happens too. A couple people going to go to jail for sure. Speaking of going to jail, I think Rosenberg wants to press charges against a taxi cab driver they had it from the airport yesterday. Uh, you, you Did see, it go that far? <clears throat> I started thinking about, I'm curious if anyone else out there has had this experience before of you're in the cab. You know, and I generally have had good experiences with cab drivers. I'm not trying to belittle the, the cab driving community. But have you ever had one where you're back there going, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I'm either going to yell at this person to stop and pull over right now, but... Keep in mind, we were on, I think, the belt, and it was pouring rain. So you're trying to figure out what to do, but the dude is barreling down on every car in front of you, slamming on the brakes at every moment, trying to pass people, getting honked at by everyone. He tried and you to didn't pass. say anything to him? I did eventually. He eventually goes to the far right to try to pass someone in the right lane. He tries to go right of the right lane. I, so I went yelled. in the shoulder. That's the shoulder. I was like, my man, I said, my man, that's not a lane. That's the shoulder. <laughs> that's not a lane. <laughs> like at that point, I was like visibly angry and mad. And, you know, he's not saying words back. He's just being like quiet. And I, I, we, we exited and we were driving on a, a smaller street. I said, if we have one more, I told my girl, I said, if we have one more thing, we're, we're getting out. I'm just telling him to pull over and we'll call you an Uber. We're doing something here. But I, I like... I took a picture of the dude's ID in case he killed us. Although I don't know, he could throw away my phone, I suppose, as Should well. You just text it to somebody. Put it in the group chat. You always have to send it to somebody. I thought about going on live. I thought about, let me put this whole thing on IG live. <laughs> I mean, that's what people do. It, it, it is a way to protect yourself. But it was it was a nightmare. Like, I, it was it was so was it ridiculously the worst cab, scary. Was it the worst cab ride you ever had? You know, you know what it's like getting old now, Ebro. We can't remember all the stories, but it's certainly the most. It's the it's the worst one I can remember. It was the worst one I can remember, and I didn't know exactly what, how to handle it. Like you don't, because the guy still has has your life in his hands, so you don't want to get too angry. You know, maybe I guess the right answer would have been to calmly say, 
hey, excuse me, sir, can you slow down? We're not in a rush. You don't need to drive fast. Right. We'll, we'll pay the meter. We not just, late, just slow down, boy. please. Jeez. Now, this is what I will say, and I said this yesterday. We had a cab driver call in the show. I'm going to reiterate it again for all the cab drivers we have listening. We rock with y'all. I have a tumultuous relationship with y'all. Y'all didn't used to pick me up. Um, I've I've thrown batteries at y'all. Oh, um, wow! I've done. I've 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 le- I've walked around cab drivers when they wouldn't drive me to my location. I've opened up all the doors on the car and walked away so that you had to get out. I've done this before. Um, but I want to say I was starting to feel bad for y'all because the the, the medallions dropped so much value and they were having a hunger strike. Remember that a few weeks ago? That's right. And I was feeling bad because I was like, look, man, these people were trying to feed their families. They were hard working. I was feeling bad. But this is now the second day in a row where I'm hearing y'all out here wilding again. Mm. That's what they do. Bigger I'm trying stuff. to not. not I'm trying to them. not. I'm trying. I know it's not all of them, Laura, but I'm just trying. Because when you drive around the city right now, you know, because the city's back. They're cutting across all the way across the street for a fair again. Remember those days? You're driving down the street and they come all the way from the left side all the way to the right. So you're like, yo, my man, it's just $4. You're going to cause an accident. Or they stop in the wrong part of the street. And there's already delivery guys blocking the street. And now there's a cab blocking the street. And he's just sitting there oh my reading his phone. And you're like, yo, my man, we're trying to get through. It's definitely OD. Yep. They cutting on bike lanes to get around you in traffic. Yo, drive, yo, I've seen cabs driving down bike lanes, man. Y'all got to chill. So I'm saying not to mention, Not to, to mention they still hit you with the, you're trying to get a ride. And they still hit you with the, no, I'm only going this way. I'm only doing that. I'm only, they still have all these rules for what they're willing to do. See, I'm really trying to rock with for y'all, but y'all gotta stop. Y'all gotta stop, man. That's all I wanted to say. Wait, well, you to guys say. gotta, you gotta, you gotta try to compete. Like you, you have competition now, and and the one thing cab drivers have that that the Uber and Lyfts right now don't have is they actually have better prices. Like Uber and Lyft are gouging right now. That's it's a insane. Fact. You, you want to go, Ebro, if you're in Manhattan and you want to go from, I'm not even talking about something crazy. My girl lives Midtown West. I live Upper West Side. It is a straight shot. It is short, 40 blocks. That's going to cost you $27 in a lift like, or an Uber. So they have the advantage on price, mm. like a slight mm. advantage. And it, it, use this as a time to try to win people back to your business. But they, they don't know how to very often. They still treat people like garbage. It's like it's built yeah. into the medallion. They like, look, you want this New York experience? <laughs> you, <laughs> you, want this, yeah. you want to feel like Yo. New York? Get in. Oh, you Scream. want to get into a cab. 